This is Seth David from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're talking about managing and tracking your inventory with QuickBooks. Segment 2, recording your inventory purchase in QuickBooks. Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call me right now at 866-945-8070 for information about private trainings. We record the live session with you so that you can review it as often as you like afterwards. Hi. Okay, we're talking about how to purchase inventory, or how to record your inventory purchase in QuickBooks. As I mentioned in the blog post, we're dealing with the acquisition of inventory. We're acquiring an asset. And as with any purchase of anything, there are a few basic ways to do it in QuickBooks. And a lot of that, which one you choose, depends on how you're actually going, either going to pay for the thing or how you did actually pay for the thing. So speaking of going to pay for the thing, that means we're entering a bill, right? If I'm paying for it at some point in the future, then I'm getting a bill for the item and I'm entering that in QuickBooks. Anytime I'm dealing with inventory, or for that matter, anytime I need to get inventory onto the books in QuickBooks, I'm dealing with my items tab here. And once I'm in my items tab, whatever I enter in here is going to add these items into inventory in QuickBooks. That's the key is I need to be able to enter in quantity and cost to arrive at the total amount. That's the only way to actually get items properly into inventory in QuickBooks. And you'll notice that every single transaction type has this same items tab at the bottom of it, whether I'm writing a check. I've got my items tab. If I'm entering a credit card charge, I've got my items tab. So just depending on how I've actually paid for the thing or how I'm going to pay for it, that's what determines which one of these transaction types I'm going to use. But the bottom section of each of these transaction types is identical. So let's say I'm just paying for the inventory outright. We'll get rid of these. And we'll come in here and I have my what you call it. And let's say I want to buy 10 of these at a cost of $2.50. Totals $25. I pay for it out of my bank account. Let's say I'm paying for it with a debit card. Purchasing directly from my supplier. Save and close. That one's very simple. Now if I go to my item list, you can see I've got a quantity on hand of 20 because I'd recorded a purchase like this once before. So that brings up the next question. What do I do when I've got prepaid inventory on the books? Let's run a balance sheet. When I have prepaid inventory on the books, it means I'm paying for it now. But the, the especially important part of this is I don't want to record that inventory into QuickBooks. I don't want to add that inventory into QuickBooks because I'm not going to have it for a while. I don't want to sell inventory I don't have yet. So I want to make sure my inventory counts are accurate, which means I can't really record a prepaid inventory transaction right into inventory. And the point here again is that I'm not expecting to receive this stuff for a while. So what we need to do is we need to create an account in the book called Inventory Prepaid. And the reason I like to call it Inventory Prepaid, by the way, is so that it shows up right next to the inventory asset account in the chart of accounts. Notice I've already got it created. It's right here, inventory prepaid. So when I'm prepaying for inventory, and let's assume I did it via, you know, wire again. What I want to do is let's say I'm prepaying, uh, let's say I'm going to buy $2,500 worth of inventory. So I have to put 50% down. So I need to pay $1,250. I'm going to record that to this inventory prepaid account and that way it doesn't affect inventory quantities. Remember the items tab is where I have to go to affect inventory quantities. This is simply going to put the value of what I'm prepaying for onto the balance sheet as a prepaid. Save and close, update the balance sheet. There it is, it shows up as inventory prepaid. Now when it's a month later and I'm actually going to get the inventory, I do need to add this onto the books. And so this, at this point we, we always want to do this as a bill. Even if I'm wiring the money right away today, uh, you're going to see why. Because I need to be able to apply this $1,250 to that. And I can't do that if I simply record a wire. So at this point, we're going to record a bill to my supplier for the whole $2,500. But we're not doing it to inventory prepaid now. We're going to come over here to items. And we're going to do it. But remember, we have to do it for the full amount. So we're buying 1,000 of these. comes to the $2,500. When I hit save and close, you'll see my inventory asset just went up by $2,500. I've still got my inventory prepaid. And if I go to pay that bill, which is what I need to do next, the problem is I'm not paying the whole $2,500. I'm only paying the $1,250, dollars 
which means I need to get this other 1250 applied to this bill. And the easiest way to do that without getting into journal entries is to uh, record a bill, except now it's, instead of a bill, we're going to do a credit. And it's going to be from my supplier, and it's going to be for the $1,250. And the account it's going to come out of is that inventory prepaid. Now watch what happens on the inventory prepaid account. If I put this in here, once I save this credit, it's going to zero out. Sure enough, there it does. And I come over here, and now I've got a credit available to be applied here. So I choose Set Credits. I click Done. Now the entire bill gets paid off. Pay Selected. I've got my prepaid inventory zeroing out. Let's go to the item list. I've got my, now I've got 1,020 items in inventory. Remember, it was 20 before, so I just added 1,000 in because I entered that bill. Notice now my inventory asset is there. The prepaid inventory is gone because it's zeroed out. So that's how you're going to deal with prepaid inventory. And at the end of the day, that's how you're going to deal with getting items of inventory onto the books. It's very simple. Whatever the transaction type is that I'm recording, whether it's a check, a credit card, or a bill, I need to be in my items tab, and I need to enter the quantity and the cost. I can never do this with a journal entry, because notice, if I go to enter a journal entry, there's no place here to put a quantity. I could debit the inventory asset account for the value of the inventory, but that's not going to get that inventory to show up here on my item list. And that presents some challenges, which is why specifically you always have to de deal with it by using the items tab in one of these transaction types. And if you watch my video that I've got on how to uh, account for in a trade-in inventory, you'll see actually how to get uh, inventory quantities onto the books where you haven't actually paid for the inventory. And that's an interesting video for you just to understand a little bit deeper the mechanics of getting inventory onto the books in QuickBooks, especially where you haven't actually paid for it and never will. That, my friends, is this week's segment on how to get your inventory purchased and onto the books in QuickBooks. As always, if you have any questions, email me, Seth at NerdEnterprises.com. Give me a call at 866-945-8070 for additional training and consulting information. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day. And I look forward to seeing you on the web. This is Seth David from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're talking about managing and tracking your inventory with QuickBooks. Segment 2, recording your inventory purchase in QuickBooks. Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call me right now at 866-945-8070 for information about private trainings. We record the live session with you so that you can review it as often as you like afterwards.